This past weekend brought me to beautiful historic downtown Salem, Massachusetts. Salem is so much fun this time of year. Uh, it is, uh, <laughs> it's kind of a circus, but uh, you know, it's, it's just a great time. Uh, people come out in costume and uh, the downtown streets kind of come alive with people. It really is kind of Salem's Black Friday. Salem has gone from this uh, sleepy little fishing village in the, you know, well, all of its history really, it has been kind of just this um, Massachusetts coastal town that um, really just, you know, regular folks live there uh, until about the 70s when uh, this woman by the name of Lori Cabot uh, moved there uh, from, um, well, from Boston, but from the West Coast originally. And uh, she was a witch. She was one of the very first people to call herself a witch uh, in the United States anyway. And in the 70s, uh, she found herself in Salem. I saw her speak in Salem actually a couple of weeks ago and she said something interesting. She said she would move anywhere in Massachusetts but not Salem because she was a witch. Why would she move to Salem? They'd, they'd uh, you know, hang her or burn her at the stake or something. But anyway, circumstances, uh, found her in Salem, and she uh, she kind of became this uh, minor at first celebrity in town, and uh, the newspapers kind of found out that she was living there and that she was a witch, and it became kind of this um, curiosity, uh, so much so that she eventually became the official witch of Salem, Massachusetts, and she remains so to this day. Um, she was. Uh, she was delightful to hear her speak. It was delightful to hear her speak uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, at the Hermetic Arts Learning Center in Salem. And uh, I'm, I'm glad I got the chance to, uh, to kind of hear her story. Um, it was a very, very interesting and inspiring story. And I encourage anybody who has the chance to, you know, come and visit Salem, Massachusetts and, and uh, visit with Laurie Cabot and all of the other interesting, fun things to do while you're there. It's especially in October, although don't expect to find parking <laughs> anywhere on the weekends. It's uh, kind of crazy. At any rate, uh, I was there because I was singing with uh, some of my barbershop quartet, uh, barbershop harmony buddies, and we had, a, uh, we had a gig there. They were doing something called Haunted Harmonies, and it was uh, organized by the town, uh, and it was a... Um, a, a series of different stops where people were uh, singing a cappella music on the corners all around this downtown walking mall area. <laughs> One of the reasons that I like Salem so much is because it really is a great place for you to be a member of an alternative spirituality, a non-mainstream spirituality. There's an awful lot of Wicca there, as you might imagine, and other forms of witchcraft. Um, that seems to be the kind of the place where uh, those things have uh, have settled in the Northeast anyway. But it is a super weird town, uh, not, not just for all of the Wiccans, but also the, um, the Satanic Temples International Headquarters just moved there. Um, there's lots of Hermeticism. The OTO has a very strong presence there. Um, if you ascribe to a small kind of weird fringe religious tradition, um, you're gonna be welcomed in Salem with open arms. Uh, you know, even even the Satanic Temple, which, you know, there are people who are not super thrilled that they're there, but for the most part, the people in Salem are like, meh. I'll probably go back uh, at least one more time in October. I'm doing a lecture at the Hermetic Arts Learning Center in Salem in November. I want to say it's the first Saturday, so it's coming up here pretty soon, but I haven't seen the posting for it yet, so I don't know exactly when that's happening, but... Um, it should be in November, if not early November. It'll probably be after Thanksgiving, but um, keep an eye out on, uh, on the Facebook pages and whatnot, and, uh, and we'll share that. And if you are in the Salem, Massachusetts area, I'm working on a presentation that I think will be pretty interesting. It's uh, on the kind of the history and practice of magic in Gnosticism. Uh, it's a subject that doesn't really get a lot of treatment, but I think that it has been a very important part of Gnosticism over the years that has been uh, not lost necessarily. Well, okay, yeah, let's say it's been lost because, you know, certainly if they were practicing magic in the first, second, third century in Alexandria and whatnot, 
uh, in a specifically Gnostic context, we don't really have a lot of information about what that was. So my presentation is a lot of, of uh, speculation and um, connecting of very disparate threads that may or may not be connected, but hey, you know, it's fun. I'm having a good time putting it together anyway, so keep an eye out for that. It won't be something that will be recorded for the video. Um, I like to keep the presentations I do in person um, kind of off camera so that uh, people will <laughs> people will uh, ask me to speak places because if everything I do is just online <laughs> and available, why would anybody ask me to come out to speak? So I have a couple of presentations that I do that are just kind of live in-person presentations and won't be on this channel. So and this is one of them. And this is a new one anyway. And and. Uh, it will be a work in progress as my uh, kind of Gnostic Ascent magic pro project is anyway uh, a work in progress. So um, might not even be worth recording or <laughs> sharing with the wider public yet, but I'm looking forward to uh, getting some in-person feedback on, on my work here. So uh, anyway, uh, that should do it. I know this might be a bit more of a um, random rambly uh, vlog, but I'm trying to do these uh, once a week now. Um, because people have been asking me and I, uh, I, I like sharing my thoughts with you guys and I had some great feedback on last week's vlog and I'm really looking forward to seeing what you all think about this. So share your thoughts about Salem, Massachusetts, if you've ever been there, if you want to go there. Um, it's, uh, you know, one of my favorite places to be in the fall. And, uh, you know, what do you think about Gnostic magic? Uh, you know, I've got a couple of weeks left to prepare for that presentation. So if you have any interesting ideas about that, I'd love to hear them. Anyway, hopefully, if all goes well, I will see you next week.